this is the 10th part of my multi part video series on how to analyze a stock in this video we will see about financial statement analysis that is the step 5 of the analysis since the content is large i will be covering this over two videos if you have not seen the earlier nine parts i request you to have a look at those videos for a better understanding of this video This is my channel empowering with financial awareness here i discuss topics on person finance and stock investing please do subscribe to my channel for updates whenever i post a new video kindly read through the disclaimer in this video i have shared a few numbers or numerical examples which are incidental and no way any kind of recommendation in the previous video we discussed about the step 4 disruption what all could disrupt the estimated growth and longevity of growth i'll quickly summarize the various steps that was discussed so far in step 0 we saw how to initially get the stock ideas in step 1 the identified stock ideas were analyzed to check whether the quality of management and quality of business is good one without the other is useless they are multiplicative in nature that is 1 by 0 or 0 by 1 is zero a poor quality management without good business dynamics is of no use for investor so when these put together it is very difficult to find a companies in the listed space which are outstanding these two parameters many companies fail in this stage in the step 2 step 3 and step 4 we discussed about growth where it is more of the art part of investing there is good amount of crystal gazing involved and also able to see into the future here is where your circle of competence comes into picture and the necessity that you stick to your circle of competence when analyzing stocks many investors fail in doing this step 2 3 and 4 so in this video now we are going to discuss or see in detail about step 5 financial statement analysis of the company financial statements where do we get it and what are the kind of financial statements financial statements are statutorily published by the listed companies in their annual reports there are three main statements the first is balance sheet it contains two entries one is the asset column the other is the liability column assets list what all the company owns and liability list what all the company owes to others the second statement is the income statement the starts with the revenue the company has earned for the year and then we go on deducting the expenses it has incurred over that period to finally arrive at the profit or loss and the third statement cash flow analysis cash is the life blood of business and this analysis shows you how cash has moved for various activities in the year there are three main parts that is cash flow from operations cash flow from investments and cash flow from financing activities cash flow from operations is very core like that is where the actual money comes from while balance sheet is a static or a snapshot on a given date say december 31st or march 31st of a year the income statement and cash flow statement are a running statements covering the story for the entire year so now comes the fourth component or the fourth financial statement so this is actually not a financial statement but it's the notes which accompany each of the components in these three financial statements this is called as notes to financial statements say in balance sheet uh, if there is a component called as current assets there will be a note and when you refer to that note there is a detailed schedule of what all the current assets the company holds on the date so these notes are also very valuable or much more valuable than these actual financial statements so when a investor analyzes these financial statements they need to ensure that they go through the accompanying notes as well financial ratios are calculated by using the numbers published in these financial statements it's a relative magnitude of two numbers or components or subcomponents picked from any of these three 
financial statements. Mr. Anil K. Sharma, in one of his videos, says that there are close to 350 financial ratios. In my view, these, these 350 are like tools in our toolbox, and we as investors need to pick up a few which are relevant to the current context or the industry which we are analyzing. Say, for banking sector, you will have, cert have a certain ratios which are applicable or more effective to analyze, which may not find use in other sectors. Since there are too many ratios, they are clustered into some categories called, say, liquidity ratios. You have some 5 ratios. Then debt or solvency ratios, you have some 5 to 6 ratios. Profitability ratios, you have entirely and some other 10 ratios and so on. From balance sheet, we can calculate liquidity ratios, working capital ratios, debt solvency ratios and so on. From income statement, we can calculate the entire profitability ratios and do a complete margin analysis. From cash flow statement, we can calculate cash flow coverage ratio, cash return on capital invested, operating cash flow ratio, cash realization ratio and so on. There is something called as cross ratios, whereby you pick one component from one statement and another component from another statement to arrive at a ratio. One good example is return on equity, where you, where you pick the uh, net profit from the income statement and equity from the balance sheet. And there are also investment valuation ratios like price to book ratio, price to earning ratio, dividend yield, price to sales ratio and so on. These primarily have the current market price of the stock in the numerator or denominator. What should an investor know to do this analysis? We saw in the 8th part of the video whether investment is a science or art and we concluded that it is science to a certain extent and art beyond a certain extent. And this step on financial statement analysis belongs to the science part where everybody has the same source of information, same formulas, everybody does the same calculation and arrives at the same result. So it involves more of number crunching and involves very simple mathematical tools. So nothing to worry. All you need to know is addition, subtraction, division and multiplication. The numbers what you see in financial statements are not static numbers. They actually convey a story about the company's recent and past performance. These numbers say many things. We as investors must be skilled enough and experienced enough to understand and interpret what the numbers say, realize the significance of the numbers and extract the message or the story that these numbers convey. Without the needed skill, the step of this framework cannot be performed. It must be noted that same set of data or information is available to everyone. But how much you can flesh out from these numbers depends upon the way you see the numbers. And that is where your skill set and experience comes into play. Of course, ratios are there everywhere. Multiple online portals are there. But you need to understand the significance of those numbers. Say, I say uh, debt to equity ratios 1.5. Is it low? Is it low? high? Is it acceptable? Is it beyond tolerance? What does the numerator say? What does the denominator say? So unless you know the proper definition of that debt to equity ratio, its benchmark values, you will not be able to do this analysis properly. So for that, acquiring the skill set is very important. It's a semester worth contents and that would not be able to cover in this video. It will involve a separate video series altogether. There are many good contents. So invest time, acquire that knowledge and practice it repeatedly and get the experience. So what is that I am going to cover in this and the next video? Yes, I am going to discuss the techniques or the way you should fine tune your financial statement analysis to make the best out of it. So where should I refer data for doing this financial statement analysis or refer the financial numbers. There are numerous online platforms, Money Control, NDTV Profits, Screener.com and so on. So should I go from there? Keep in mind, sometimes the numbers which you see in these online platforms or the ratios calculated are made on certain set of assumptions. Say, the net profit could have been calculated without considering or with considering the extraordinary items which are applicable to only one year. The dividends could have been shown by considering the special dividend that was declared only for one year. So the numbers what you see in these platforms do differ for the same company for the same period. So I would suggest that you create your own Excel with various financial ratios uh, applicable or that is needed for the analysis of the industry in hand. Pick the source or the financial numbers from the annual report of the company and not from any portal for the last 5 to 10 years. 
since you are having your own excel once you key in the formula all you need to is do is to drag the cells uh, to see the ratio for the four five years or 10 years data what you have you key in the source data formula you just need to drag and you get the ratios immediately and as you key in the numbers do read through the notes against various numbers say in the balance sheet they talk about investments or current investments refer the notes go to the notes and see where are the current investment lying so you'll be doing it as you go through the financial statements this approach will give a feel of how the numerator and denominator in the various ratios have behaved over a period of time this is worth going the extra mile for a, maybe you would spend five days for a five-year investment it's perfectly okay but still if you feel i'm hard pressed for time i have no time to pick up excel key in the values perfectly okay you can go and refer the online portals but this does give the extra rewards then comes horizontal analysis this method is also called as trend analysis here we compare the financial line or ratio or the number over a number of accounting periods with minimum three periods required there are different methods for comparison one is comparison of absolute numbers and another one is percentage change comparison so what all can be compared revenues profit expenses cash liabilities etc to just understand the behavior over a period of time this method will be very useful when you want to compare two companies within the same industry having different scale and size say one is a mid cap other is a large cap and uh, the numbers are so diverse or so vastly different creating this analysis will have a common bench for benchmark for comparing both the companies see in this example there is sales past five years sales i have and you can see a beautiful trend of uh, the sales going up then i pick up the sales growth in absolute numbers that also is very similar like 277 lakhs 276 264 it's almost uh, same every year it's almost same but when i go to a sales growth in percentage terms i have a different story the growth rate somewhere in 2014 what is 30 percentage in 2017 what i see is only half of it less than 15 percent which means as the as the number of years passes the growth rate is declining though there is a good amount of growth which you can see in the trend uh, chart for sales the sales growth percentage has been declining steadily so it's not able to keep up the same growth with the increasing size of operations or increasing revenue so such kind of interpretations you get from horizontal analysis vertical analysis this method of analysis is also called as common size financial statements the calculation for the various components or sub components in the financial statement is done for a common denominator say in case of balance sheet the common denominator could be total assets or total liabilities and in case of uh, profit and loss statement that is the income statement it could be the revenue so it gives different inferences we'll just see a sample so when you do this common sized uh, balance sheet you will come to know what percentage of inventory or current assets or account receivable is against the total assets when you have multiple year statements you can see how the behavior is over a period of time and how does the value or a particular component or subcomponent stack against the competitor companies say uh, inventory uh, inventory you have 20 percentage in your company whereas other company has just 5 percentage inventory so that such comparisons is possible when you have a common sized balance sheet or a pl and l statement so in this example this is a real example where you can see the current liabilities have been steadily declining and the fixed assets have been steadily increasing so all such uh, inferences come out when you do the vertical analysis we will just see other aspects which can fine tune your financial statement analysis have the analysis done for multiple year uh, financial statements not one year by doing that you get a beautiful trend like uh, whether it's increasing decreasing just one year statement could be misleading minimum five years is required and if you can pick up a data for 10 years you you may even have a story or a trend through a complete cycle complete business cycle the second aspect is create charts charts help in better interpretation of numbers rather than just you see the numbers over a period of time charts will quickly give you whether it is increasing or decreasing it's fluctuating so create charts that will give you a beautiful trend get insights by deep diving at anomalies so in this example you can see roe trend i am seeing 
it is dipping in 2011 and again there's a spike in 2000 sorry um there's a dip in 2012 and a spike in 2013 so i just uh, do a three stage and a five stage analysis and to see that the net profit margin is fluctuating those two years so don't stop with that deep dive to see from the 2012 annual report what caused the net profit margin to dip refer the 2013 annual report to find out what caused the net profit margin to increase was the cost of materials fluctuating so something will come out when you deep dive so create charts and of course deep dive on anomalies as well focus more on consolidated statements in case where there are multiple subsidiaries of a company there will be two statements like one is standalone another is consolidated financial statements standalone carries the financial statements and numbers only for the company in discussion whereas a consolidated statement has the numbers and ratios considering all the subsidiaries associate companies and so on so if there are too many subsidiaries it's very crucial it may so happen that a standalone statement may show a profitability whereas a consolidated statement will show a totally different picture then evaluate related parameters check how related parameters behave that over a period of time does the insights convey some story so this can be done for revenue versus net profits revenue versus inventory revenue versus receivables and many such combinations so let me take in this case revenue versus net profits with increasing revenue profits increase this is the first case is very straight forward the second image when you see revenue is increasing but profits is not increasing that much so it could be possible that they are achieving higher revenue by providing discounts so they are providing discounts to boost up the revenue and that's not getting turned as profitable profits for the shareholders so that's what the second picture would mean and third picture the revenue is almost constant but net the profit has been increasing so how that is possible are they increasing the prices or is the input cost going down so such things come out when you compare two parameters two related parameters in financial statements thanks for watching this video do drop your questions in the comment section i'll soon be back with the next video which is a continuation of this step on financial statement analysis uh, where i will discuss few more aspects and also share good resources which will help you to learn more or become experts in financial statement analysis if you like this video please do share with your friends thank you very much